All right, here we go, continuing with the MEAP 20S videos. Uh, this is 5.3, Interpreting and Sketching Graphs, Outcome R1. Uh, you're going to find this page 276 to 283 in your textbook. Let's dive in. Okay, so looking at this first example, we've got a graph of uh, ages and heights of people. So on the bottom here, we have uh, ages, and here we've got heights, and each of these points represent a person. So the each point tells us information about their age and their height. So you look down, you find their age, you look over, you find their height. Okay, so we've got a few questions here. Uh, which person is the oldest? Okay, so we want to look over here on our x-axis, and that's our age axis, and we want to see which person is the oldest. Okay, so that is person G, and so we look for person G here, and look down, how old are they? Well, that tells you that they are 18 years old. Okay, so person G is 18. All right, so which person is the youngest? All right, so we have, uh, let's see which person we find closest to the beginning of the age here. Okay, so that's there. So which person is the youngest? Well, that would be person A. All right, and what is their age? Well, they are zero. That's probably because they're a baby and they were just born. They're zero. All right. Now, which two people have the same height? So here we're looking on the height and we're looking to see across if there are two dots that are exactly this at the same number. And we see here that person B and C, B and C, have the same height. What is their height? Well, they are both 100 centimeters and you simply look across to see what their height is. Uh, which two people have the same age? Okay, so we're going to look to see which two dots are right above each other. So E and D are above and below each other and they are the same age. We go down to right there and it tells us how old they are. So these folks are, so we've got D and E and they are 10 years, oops, years old. Okay, now, uh, which of person B or C is taller for her age? Okay, so we're going to notice here B and C are right next to each other. Now, one person is younger, and they're the same height as someone who's older than them. So the answer to this one is B because they are younger. All right. Okay, so this next uh, slide here, this next graph shows us what a day trip from Athabasca to Kikino looks like. And again here we notice uh, we have time and we have distance. And we want to know what do you think is happening along here? So for two, in two hours they seem to go 140 kilometers. And then we notice over here in this part that you've got uh, no distance being covered. So what are they doing for one hour. Oh, they're probably taking a break. Uh, now we see here in B and C, uh, we see that they are probably heading back in the direction that they came from, and then they decide to stop again during C and D. So that's a, a horizontal line there. And then from D to E, we notice that they are going back to where they started from, and uh, it takes them an hour to do that. All right, so that's just kind of a general description. Uh, what I'd like you to do is write out uh, what you, how you would interpret this graph. Uh, press pause, take the time to do it yourself, and you'll see the answer on the next slide.
Okay, so here it is, a little more formally. Um, it shows you what's happening uh, in each line segment. So what the graph is doing, the graph is increasing and going to the right. Uh, and it's describing what's happening in the actual journey. So press pause, take uh, your time to read through this and uh, make sure it makes sense to you with the graph in the previous slide. Okay, so in this example we have some information and uh, we need to interpret it in order to sketch a graph. So the story is uh, Alicia is racing, she's a runner, and so this is her journey. At the beginning of a race, Alicia took two seconds to reach a speed of 8 meters per second. She ran at approximately 8 meters per second for 12 seconds, then slowed down to stop, to a stop in two seconds. Uh, sketch a graph of speed as a function of time. Label each section of your graph and explain what it represents. Okay, so what you're going to have is you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Uh, what do you think is going to go on this axis? What do you think is going to go on this axis? And you have to uh, figure out what the lines are doing in this portion of the graph. So take a couple of seconds, press pause, and I'm going to show you what it looks like in the next slide, okay? All right, so this is Alicia's graph. Uh, it takes her two seconds to reach a speed of eight, uh, sorry, eight meters per second. So right here, that's two seconds. It takes her two seconds to get to eight meters per second. Then what she does is she runs at eight meters per second. So she continues to run at eight meters per second. There's no change in this speed. Her speed is constant along this area along this time frame here and uh, then what she does is she slows down to a stop and she slows down in two seconds okay so take note that this is time here and this is speed because all the information given to us in this question was about speed and time so we graph a speed versus time graph all right hope you enjoyed that and uh, have fun with the exercises